they say the most important things in a video, when you're making a YouTube video, you want to figure out, you want to get your audio quality good. Had that on some level for a while now, sure, except for right now, because this thing doesn't have good audio. And then there's like people think like, video, but actually, if you're doing live action, it's supposed to be the next thing you want more than anything is good lighting. This is quickly becoming the most convoluted video I've ever done. I didn't order these lights for this video, to be clear. I was just like getting this stuff. But yeah, like, here's my supplies. Because I figured it'd be a better experience if I'm like drawing. The weak link here, though, is going to be that I'm using this goddamn webcam here. And that's like all I've got right now. And that's a bummer. But you know, like that looks... Especially if you look at the, the camera and everything. It almost looks like an alright video. You might be able to see shit. So, I'm hoping this all works out. It's my first extended live action attempt at a thing. These lights are hilarious and ridiculous. Let's see. I'm trying to figure out how to hold this camera. Look at how big this fucking bulb is. Oh my god. It just keeps going. I'm afraid to hold the head. Where do I? I'm afraid of how to hold this camera. I can't tell where the microphone is. I'm trying not to plug the microphone. Look at that. Look, look at this. I pulled these out of the, out of the styrofoam and I was a little afraid. <laughs> uh, I'll have to like, storing these things is going to be experience. They've just been under my bed for like six months because I never started quite doing as much live action thing as I thought I might do. Partly because this camera sucks and so on. But yeah, let's uh, let's begin the adventure. Okay, we gotta get this started or I'll never get anything done. <laughs> I thought I was gonna start it fresh at noon. It's now 4 p.m. I uh, made some not great plans along the way here. I Rewind, rewind. I should introduce this via the actual subject of why we're here. That makes more sense. <laughs> I'm just sitting here assuming that you all know why we're here. All right, welcome to uh, questions from Patreon number. <laughs> so we're probably on 85 now, I think. Yeah, 85. Uh, and the question we're answering today is from Weary Joe on Patreon. It says, some time ago, you're talking about how much you like the depth of level design from From Software games especially Dark Souls. You mentioned your idea that you can give anyone who played one of the Soulsborne games a blank slate and tell them, draw the map of the world with all the meaningful items and encounters, and you said that he could do that. I believe you, as I... Uh, I believe you, as I also am a fan of that aspect of the Souls games, but I also challenge you, do it. Game of your choice, just any graphics editor... No Googling, replaying the game to fresh memory. Joke's on you, you said gra no gra any graphics editor. I'm doing it in paper. I went out and got this. So f for some background for people that didn't watch the other videos that led to this discussion and where we are at the moment and so on. The reason we're talking about this is, and it, by the way, if I sound weird, it's because my microphone's far away from my face. I don't know if that's gonna change it that much, but I, I need access to table with my direct line of sight and so the ca the microphone's kind of off in the corner in a way that it's not supposed to be normally but whatever so i just talked about generally like level designing games and how much like some games really make the the level design like really stick with you and how some games just don't like and it's it's not always directly correlated with the quality of the game although sometimes a game could be improved by having better better and more interesting and more memorable level design but in particular uh western rpgs which i play a lot and Japanese RPGs often have these environments that you would never be able to recreate. Like, particular dungeons in Dragon Age Origins, for example. Or, like, that part of every JRPG where you leave the starting village. And then you go into, like, a big green field. And, like, somewhere over there are some ruins. And somewhere over there is a castle or something. And it's like, if you try to draw half of that map you just make a series of blobs connected by spokes and like if you have if you have a really good memory you might be able to recreate like which spots are connected to what but like the resolution of the map would be so low detail because you would just be drawing everything with the purpose of uh how do i put this you would you you, you could functionally maybe say what zones attach to each other 
like, ah, here's Viridian City or whatever. But like the moment to moment detail, like the granularity of it all would be like nuts to be able to recreate. That's like the type of shit you could only be able to do if you were like creating a strategy guide from scratch while physically playing the game and it's on, it's right in front of you right now. Whereas the vast, vast majority of games, I think it'd be really hard to recreate them from scratch from memory. Uh, and so I, I, so I just made a point, just a vague point of like, I, I, if you if you had somebody play Tales of Zasteria, and you had someone play Dragon Age Origins, and then you had somebody play like Dark Souls, and then they all sat down and had to draw the map of the game afterwards, one of them would do significantly better than the other one. And it's partly just because of what I love about Dark Souls is that like it's these massively detailed, well-paced environments. Uh, they don't waste your time. They're not padded, but they're also scary. You fear for your surroundings because you can die so quickly. So you're scanning the environment constantly and trying to figure out where to go. But also Dark Souls has no map and no objective markers, and it's well designed to allow for the fact that it has no map and no objective markers. So you have to navigate entirely via what you can see around you. So every environment is a really unique location with landmarks and sometimes like a big thing in the distance you can see that you can use to like orient yourself as you go through a series of different environments. And you can even see some levels from the other levels, which makes it a cohesive world. Like Dark Souls is like specifically known for this aspect of itself. Uh, so I, I, I kind of posit the idea that if somebody even played just Dark Souls just once, they could probably, like, draw a shockingly accurate map. Not, like, a perfect recreation of the world or anything. I'm not gonna, like, be perfect here or anything, but, like, it'll be impressive. Especially compared to many, many other games, like a From Software game that's a third-person action RPG where you die quickly. All those Soulsborne games, including Sekiro and Bloodborne, uh, I think people could draw surprisingly accurate maps of those games. And they could probably. And there's definitely other games out there that, that can happen with. But there's also a lot of games where you would probably struggle, like The Witcher Three or anything that involves like a big overhead, a big open map where you just kind of chase objectives around and like the games can be good in other ways, but the level design is often not why they're good if they are good. Like a game like Far Cry or many other Ubisoft games, you kind of just run at your objective and you can approach the objective from any direction and it's just like an encampment with a marker on it and you go fight the encampment and then you move on with your life and you never go there again. And you didn't really have to think about how you dealt with that environment that much because it wasn't that intricate and involved and it just wasn't really designed with the play with the player in mind of like exactly how you would deal with this encounter and like you not you not like you're not remembering exactly what enemies were there because it's probably just the same dudes you've been fighting all game but again and maybe a slightly different number or intensity. But like in Dark Souls, you uh every encounter is like a unique encounter. Like there are almost no instances of repeating fights in Soulsborne games in many cases. Because like the if you fight another group of enemies after the previous ones, like they're suddenly in a different pattern, or there's a different combination of enemies, or they're like placed in the environment to use the environment against you and so on. Uh and that's just I just this is just neat. Turns out Dark Souls is pretty neat. Fucking hot take. All right, so now I'm gonna take this. Now I'm gonna take on this incredibly intimidating project. This is my this is my test thing where I was trying to see how ink would look in the webcam. Eh, go away. It didn't go away enough. Go away more. Uh, I've been a bit intimidated by this project. It's probably gonna take many hours, and it's also there's that part of me that's like, oh god, I'm gonna spend all day on this thing and. This will be either the most boring or most interesting thing I've done all month. And like I said, depending on who you are, maybe both or either. But uh, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit here and draw maps semi coherently while rambling, uh, mostly trying to explain what I'm drawing. And I have not practiced. I have not reviewed any map materials. And the last time I played Dark Souls was whenever the last whenever that remastered game came out, which I think at this point was two years ago. So. A little bit of a muddied result. Uh, one, I have not recently played the game, so it's not the whole like fresh after playing the game idea that I had. But I have played Dark Souls multiple times, so it's muddying the waters on two levels there. But hey, I haven't played Dark Souls for multiple years, so we'll see how good it, it, this sticks with me. And also, the, uh, hopefully this doesn't look weird. I'm going to have to flip all the video because of the fact that... Uh, 
this is uh, the webcam is from the reverse angle from what I, the direction I'm sitting in here. All right, so <laughs> how do we even start this? All right, let's do Undead Asylum. There we go. That's my fantastic handwriting. I'm also doing this in Sharpie, so uh, gonna make some mistakes here. <laughs> it's gonna be really sketchy and messy, but uh, that's what stands out best on footage. And also, me fixing the mistakes might be amusing, hopefully. I don't know. Maybe I'll use like red or something as like my fuck ups to try to edit that. Uh, we should probably have like a color scheme here, shouldn't we? I've really planned this out. So, oh, yeah, the reason why I'm so late starting this, and it's like over 4 p.m., uh, this is my first time trying to buy something during the plague in a store that wasn't just groceries. I haven't been to a grocery st anything besides a grocery store in like a couple months now. So I ordered the, the stuff online and then I sat in the parking lot for like an hour waiting for the... Because I, I, I got to the parking lot and then realized the email said, wait for us to email you. And then I'm like, well, I don't, don't want to rudely walk in like a stupid, like a stupid person and like like not acknowledge the fact that like the email like you know <clears throat> I didn't get the email so then it's not supposed to be ready but after an hour of sitting in my car in the heat with the fanning myself with the door open and sending stupid voice messages to Bird and Andrew uh I then was like fuck uh <laughs> I should just go in right so I walked I walked to the line and you wait six feet apart and I waited there for like half an hour until I was finally in and I was like, and I asked them like I ordered I ordered a thing at, at that point it was like two hours ago. Uh, I was like, is, 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 I haven't gotten the email, but what's going on? And they're like, oh, honey, oh, if you ordered something online, it's not going to be ready till tomorrow. And I was like, what? It didn't tell me that. I didn't say it. I didn't, I didn't react in the moment or anything. But in my head, I'm like, oh no, I've been waiting here for no reason in the heat all day. Uh, it didn't tell me it was going to be tomorrow. So. Uh, I was like, can I just get the thing? Because I didn't know you could walk in. I thought the place was closed and you had to order online and they'd bring it out to you, which is what happened. That's what I always keep hearing is how things are going right now. Uh, I thought I thought that you, that everyone, everyone waiting in line, I thought we were just picking up online orders. But they're just going in the store. You could just go in the store. I'm like, oh, fuck. It's just that only 10 people can be in the entire store at once. I'm like, I could have saved so much time and sweat so much less today if I had known that. But then I eventually, like, I got the pads, this this giant, chunky art pad, because uh, I'm going all in on this for some reason. Uh, and <laughs> and then and then they, 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 they'll cancel my online order and it's fine. But it's just like, ah, he wasted so much time doing this. Okay, so we got to come up with a system here. Let's do blue. Blue will be us fixing errors if I need to, and green will be items if I remember item placements, and red will be enemy placements, and just for the sake of it, let's have a boss color, I guess. This is purple. It's almost red, but it's like special because it's a boss encounter. That'll be my thought process here at the moment, I guess. There, we have a color key of some kind. <laughs> Oh, and we need to. We need. We should have a bonfire color, I guess. Which I guess would just be like an orange color. Hopefully, these all are distinct colors when they're on paper. I really haven't planned this nearly as much as you would think I had, except for all the part where I've been thinking about it all the time. Just I just keep coming up with additional complications all along the way. So weirdly, even though it's where you start, the hardest thing to remember about this entire environment is where you start. I have this vision in my head of a hallway. I guess I should just draw that and then link it to it or something. Hmm. Let's leave that for later, I suppose. Instead, we'll, f we'll focus on like, let's make the asylum itself. So I'm just going to draw a big rectangle. I'm afraid it, the pressure's on with this fucking permanent marker shit. Okay, so we have this big rectangle, and there's definitely a zone on each side of this area. There's like a, okay, so let's start with the uh, 
There's like a central courtyard area. And in that central courtyard area, there's a bonfire, which I apparently am drawing. All right, let's try this. There we go. It's a little more bonfire. <laughs> it was just a dollar sign. So there is our bonfire location. We have this big, scary door here, which leads to the area where you fight the asylum demon. Which I'm going to draw as being a fat belly with one of those little plus sign belly buttons and some wings and some horns and angry face and big chunky legs. Yar. I guess he should have like a wing or something. Uh, he should have arms. Rar, this is my arm and my giant club that I do smashy with. And this is my, and my other arm. This is, this is art. I'm an artist, if you couldn't tell. This is basically my calling as a person. All right, that's a good start. And uh, definitely true. <clears throat> if this is the outside of the asylum, there was definitely a balcony up here on the second floor. And you reach that balcony via a staircase that's right around here. And yes, the proportions are going to be all over the place when it comes to this stuff. The perspective is going to be weird. I'm going to draw a top down. I'm apparently going to draw a top, a top down blueprint and camera angle, but I'm going to draw doors like they're on the floor. And we're going to have like a whole system here. Maybe I should have a door color too. Just really complicate this shit. It's like doors are now going to be brown. There's going to be a door over here. Is, is brown even a noticeably different color? Probably not. This is planned as shit. I started in the middle of the zone, which is already a great choice. Uh, there is a door here and a door here. If you successfully get past Mr. Asylum here. And this door leads to, let's call it the Raven area with the gravestones and shit. This will be how I draw staircases apparently. Because there's a central staircase that leads to Raven. Ka. <laughs> That's like a moth. Like I've basically nailed it. I don't. I don't know what you're complaining about. That's how you draw wings, right? It's just like a, a parentheses bracket. <laughs> All right, so I've, I've started this one in a weird way. I think I'm going to mostly draw these in the order in which you uh, play through the zone. But I'm going off the cuff of my head here, and it's easier to start here with the bonfire, I think, because it's hard for me to imagine the starting zone a little bit. But I've also taken up a little bit too much space, perhaps, with the starting drawing. Uh... So this door is the one that opens if you run past the fight from the get-go. And I believe this one actually has another bonfire in it. Because that's the bonfire you use for what's essentially the next level after you've done your like meant-to-lose boss fight against the Asylum Demon. And this has this long hallway leading to this balcony up here. There's a couple of different rooms in here. Oopsie. Ah, dropping shit on the floor. Thankfully, it was capped. And so right here we have Archer douchebag.
that's an archer. Yeah, that's a that's a bow right there. He's right there. He shoots a bow. At, he shoots his arrow at you. Comes flying towards you. You and you have to dive into the side room, which is where you get your shield. That's vaguely what a shield looks like. Uh, and I think you might, there might be a sword in there too. Yeah, there's probably a sword in there. I'm just gonna say that you get a sword. It's a strangely drawn sword. <laughs> so you get you get your suddenly you're like equipped. You can actually handle yourself because until then you were naked. That's why you couldn't fight the asylum demon the first time around. So you go you get a new bonfire after you run from him the first time. Uh, you get your sword and shield because this guy makes you run to the side room because you're like, oh god, he's shooting arrows at me in this hallway. I can't fight back against this. That's impossible. And so you get your sword and shield. You come in after him. Um, that room may not exist. That room may not exist. I'm just going <laughs> to cross this room out. It's not real. I imagine this room. <laughs> what did I say blue was? Blue is going to be errors. Shit. How do I do fog gate? Fog gates will be silver. Wee. Woody, 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 woody. There's a fog gate right here. And silver. Because I have a silver gel pen just lying around like normal people do. In addition to my mug full of Sharpies, just normal things to have. I think there's a generic enemy you fight here. There's a few different things going on. This is all nutso. Hmm. I'm just going to say there's a dude right here. It's just, just, just a generic dude face, just to the neutral expression. Because I think your goal there is to be able to try to backstab him as an intro to that idea a little bit. But you get up here on the balcony. There's the second floor. Trying to save space a little bit by not having to draw each floor individually because I could and that would take That will probably have to happen in some cases later, but for now I'm drawing this area as one Drawing as a as a getting as the get go starting thing Bark up bark up bark up All right, so here is the brick. So second floor, I think you drop down, back down to there, or you might take a staircase down or something. But you, this is how you loop back around to the main courtyard. Now that you're in the main courtyard again, you have access to this side door here. These are looking more and more like penises. Uh, there is a smug dude up here that's like, yo, you don't get to take this staircase, so you get bouldered by evil boulder and then the evil boulder is now over here and poor sa oh and I need NPCs um I'll just have NPCs be blue <laughs> I don't, at this point having a correction color is not even gonna work anymore so we have uh, I don't know how to draw his <laughs> That's what Oscar looks like. Oscar looks like Poon Poon, apparently. Oscar's there. He's sad. He's the saddest boy. He's dying. And he gives you the Estus Flask, the life juice of all of Dark Souls. Because the uh, wall breaks down when that guy throws a boulder at you. And the first time I played this game, I didn't notice that. I just like, that asshole, he tried to kill me with a boulder. Then I went and tried to go that way and fight him. And I don't think I turned around and saw that there was a, um, you know, an NPC down there with a special item and all these other important details going on there. You know what? You might go through here and then come down a staircase over here and then come back around here. This part of the map. 
that part is hazy for me. Because I feel like there also might be a, st a staircase going down that way, and I'm not totally sure about that. Hmm. <laughs> it's going to be interesting kind of figure out how to draw all this. Okay, so. Let's draw an extension of the courtyard area here. <laughs> this is getting increasingly nonsensical. Uh... I believe that in this lower part of the court, it's be I think there's a doorway here or a separate wall or something. I'm, I remember, I'm trying to remember how you get for two here in the first place from the beginning of the game. And I think there's like a well with a ladder going down into it. But I could be imagining that or re replacing it from somewhere else in the game. And when you go down that ladder, I was going to draw this as like a separate area and then draw like a dotted line to it, but I think I can actually like reasonably connect it here. There's essentially like an L-shaped hallway. I'm not going to be able to place it very well under all of this in a sensical way. But basically, you're in your starting cell. And then you go down a hallway, then to this room and up into that that's vaguely what there might be a couple more bends but it is just a hallway so it's not the most especially significant location it is the, just the linear why do i not know how to draw doors <laughs> why did i draw the why did i draw a horizontal line on a door i'm also drawing every door as being a double door even though that's not the case but you know i just kind of fell into that as my template apparently so that's where you start And if you can't read my handwriting, we're going to be in a bad place. And there's just like, this is the... Try jumping. Blah, 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 blah. Ha, ha, fatty. Blah, 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 blah. There's all the messages explaining how to play the game. And there's just like a couple sad dudes here and there. They're all passive and standing around, so they're not actually enemies, but I use the enemy color because that's what we got in our color scheme. I hope you can all appreciate the stupid children's drawing approach I'm taking to this whole thing <laughs> instead of like downloading drafting software or something. I didn't want to use computer software in this because I felt like it was going to be just way too awkward and stilted and too much time spent like fiddling with like the software itself and trying to learn how to do that and so on but anyway there's one important detail here that we need to denote which is oh my god what about the second visit so the second visit this whole central room collapses into a hole do 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 In that second visit, you get this room. It's just a square. And I think there's like a ladder in the corner or something. And where does that ladder lead to? It leads to here. If I remember correctly, I should, if, I, if I'd planned this slightly better, I could have like planned that to be over there or something. Like, I, which I guess that denotes where this is with relation to that. So that like this would have to be like there ish because you can you can see through the window and see the big brother of this boss fight in here which is here but you know that would be planning how to let's pink i'll use pink as like a connecting arrow between places when i need to i guess it's like this hole that hole right there drops you here so it's like, uh, that's where the hole takes you. And this ladder. 
I'm just gonna go around the border of the whole map now. Takes you here. Wow. Now I'm gonna color these arrows in because I have no consistency of format style. There we go. Is this bleeding through, by the way? Am I gonna have to worry about the next page? No, the next page is, page is spotless. This is why you get art paper instead of like printer paper, which I was considering doing at first, which has been way smaller, and it would have been way harder to pick up on the shitty television, on the shitty webcam we're using here. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll try to scan these or photograph them or, or something and make a gallery of them so you can like look at that version. If you're already bored with this idea, you can just look at my children's drawings of the entire game and stop watching the video right now. But, <laughs> or you can sit here and eat, just watch it piecemeal for like a week or something. I'm having fun. This is fun. This is also stupid. It's very stupid. I've made several mistakes. I imagined a room or maybe I didn't. Maybe there is a room there. Also, don't really remember what happens right here very well. Maybe you go through here on the second floor and land here, or maybe you just drop down right here. Those both might be the case. Hmm. So then we need to draw, let's see. I guess I drew him like that, so grrr, grr, grr. Spoilers, it's second visit evil Oscar. Yeah, that happens eventually. And then there's like the, uh, over here there's like the second visit Yar, that's what fire looks like. I'm drawing fire, it's not cotton candy. Second visit torch assholes. That's right, kids. I mean, moms, this isn't a child-friendly map drawing session. I drew that. This balcony has become untenable at this point. All right, yeah, I should have tried to slice this into separate floors, uh, but we might be able to get away with it for now, but it's pretty bad. This is a pretty bad attempt already. Let's plan this area out. The important thing is that I remember these things more so than whether or not I can draw them that well, I guess. This is the staircase, but it's all crumbly, so you can't go down the staircase. And there's a door here and a door here that I drew with the horizontal line again because something's wrong with me. Yay. And here is... Oh no, uh, it's an angry boy. But worst of all, it's an angry boy with a shield, making him physically unkillable. Uh, as far as I'm, and a spear. He has a spear and a shield, I think, or maybe a rapier or, or stabby weapon. And he is fucking undefeatable when you're a new player at the game. That's where this arrow leads to. Uh, shit, I didn't leave enough space. But here on the second floor, I'll do a dotted line. There is a shitty balcony. Because you go up the staircase onto this balcony, and then over here there's a shitty balcony that overhangs this asshole, and he breaks the balcony if you stand on it for like a whole three seconds, which is apparently too long. And there's definitely an item like right here. I don't remember what it is. It's probably a ring. I think it's probably a ring, because you can only get on the second visit. That's why you want to come back, because you want to come back here, because this door only opens if you have a key from later in the game, probably like... The, in the depths or something, I would say. That's probably a, a key from the depths or something that you need in order to get there. This is just the first tiny starting area, and immediately it's way harder to draw than I expected. <laughs> but mo oh, not because of memory problems as much as because of the logistics of how you draw shit. I think there's like a couple of angry boys here, and then there's like a couple of angry boys here. One of them has a bow. That one looks a little too happy. That's, I'm just gonna draw the, I'm gonna do an un, unfurnished, just to deal with a slice, slice through it. That's, a, that's, what a, that's what a bow looks like. 
taking a bunch of caffeine drinks right now. Uh, this is a uh, this is reasonably approximately where I'd want this to be. I think I'm like more or less done. Just got to redraw the same demon guy again, but like, believe me, this one's like more bigger or something because he's the the stray demon. I'm gonna get sloppier and sloppier with my drawings as I realize how time consuming it is to draw. If you ever have a guy that you like like on the internet that does like web comics or some shit, or like it does like a, not even web comics, but like proper comics, like full chronological storytelling over the course of hundreds of pages comics, um, yeah, they put a, that's a lot of work. <laughs> that is so much fucking work. I guess I should name them whenever I can remember them. So it's the Asylum Demon Stray Demon. Second visit. All right. That's not bad. I can draw like a little. There we go. That's a little, that's a little crow's nest. And the crow grabs you when you leave the zone for the first time and grabs you up and takes you to a completely disconnected map because uh, Dark Souls is known for, known for its uh, connectivity. So the first, the first zone's of course not connected to anything. That's, that's how that works. All right, well this is already a disaster. Let's see how it improves. Ah. And, and by the way, there might be, it's probably gonna be a cut here. Uh, I'm not doing this in one session. I'm probably doing it in one day, but I'm definitely taking breaks because uh, if I try to do this all in one continuous recording, I might lose my mind. How did I do that? Look how like perfectly framed that ceiling fan is in the reflection of the phone. Art.